Ah, the good old days. If you're a fellow Gen Xer, growing up in the 70s and 80s were the best time of our lives, right? It was filled with some of the best music, some really iconic TV shows, and the birth of modern technology. And what if I told you that AI or artificial intelligence was actually starting to make its mark way back then, even if we didn't realize it? Let's face it, Gen X grew up with some pretty heavy references about AI. I'm not even going to talk about all the sci-fi novels that we had out there to read. But let's talk about starting with 2001 A Space Odyssey. Um, let's go to Westworld. Not the new one that was on HBO that was really kind of cool that turned out really bad. But <laughs> the, the first ones with Yul Brynner, Westworld followed up by Future World. And then let's fast forward to Alien. Oh, that was a bit of a shocker. Um, Blade Runner. That was such a cool movie, though. I still fall asleep listening to that movie. That movie just had such a cool vibe. And then War Games. Um, oh, and let's not even talk about Terminator. Uh, do you want Skynet? Because this is how you get Skynet. Gen X has zero reason to trust AI. But then if you think about all the good references that we had, Star Trek is one of the biggest examples of why we definitely want AI. I mean, what could be better than like Scotty just talking to the computer? You just say computer, and then you just tell him what you want. And then come on, admit it. You wanted Max Headroom to be your buddy. As much of an asshole as he was, he was a snarky asshole and we loved him. And he was awesome. So AI has actually been around longer than you think. If you hearken back to like the 70s, remember Pong? Oh yeah, that was probably one of the first experiences with AI that I experienced that I didn't even realize was AI. Uh, what was it? Back in 1997, IBM made a computer called Deep Blue and it played that chess master, Gary Kasparov, and it beat him. Now he came back later and beat it. But that was a big one. I now remember Watson on Jeopardy, where he went up against the two top guys in Jeopardy, and he beat them, and they trained him for like days and weeks. They trained him on prompts on how to understand what Alex Trebek was saying, how to phrase the question properly. It didn't know what the categories were, were going to be, so they just trained it on like a bunch of general knowledge, but it knew to buzz in, it knew how to phrase it correctly, but sometimes it didn't know. If you want to look at today's example of something that we probably use every day that you never thought about, autocorrect on your phone. When you're trying to text something and it predicts kind of the next word you want to say, that's generative AI. That's an AI training what your common speech patterns are and trying to predict what you'll say next. So if you get kind of caught up in that buzzword of generative AI, that's really a perfect example of what it is. It's just predicting text based off of learning your speech patterns. It's not as scary as it sounds. It's just machine algorithms. That's all it is. You know, if you think about it, Gen Xers really grew up at a time of the ultimate independence as far as I'm concerned. We stayed out late till the lights came on. Your parents didn't have to know where you were all the time because they trusted you not to do fool stuff well, most of the time. Hey, Gen Xers, we handled our business. The amount of scheming that it took to cover up the stupid things that we did. We are innovators of our time. Sorry, mom. Oh, I didn't think about my mom watching this. What's she going to do? Ground me? The pandemic did that. Thanks. You know, we didn't have computers. We didn't have internet. So we had to entertain ourselves. And we had to figure stuff out. I think we were the generation that originated the FAFO. And if you think about that for a minute, you'll know what I'm talking about. But we couldn't just go to YouTube to figure out how to do stuff, right? We had to sit down and we had to figure it out ourselves. We were the ones that were programming the VCRs, all the new technology that our parents got because they just, they couldn't be bothered or whatever. And you know what I have to thank for that? This dude. That's right. The Atari. The Atari was the first one where when we figured out, oh, our games aren't playing, what do we do? We, we blow on the cartridges. Why did we think that worked? Because it did. That's why we faffoed. 
sorry. I'm gonna keep playing these cats out like a And we got it done. And I think that's why AI kind of makes sense to us because we've been waiting for this. I've been getting into AI ever since the first surfacing of ChatGPT. And I used it for a lot of really cool things, mostly like brainstorming D&D stories. I mean, where was this stuff when I was DMing, right? And then Midjourney came along and I was like, really, where has this been all my life? I couldn't draw worth poop. And then Midjourney came up and I just told it, oh, I have this knight and it's got this armor and it looks like this. And she's got this facial expression and bam, bam, bam. I got her. I was like, well, that looks a lot better than what I had on my character sheet back then. But back to my main point, not everybody's as excited about AI as I am and not everyone is as fluent with it. And I think a lot of people are scared of it because they think it's too complicated. They think you have to be a programmer or you have to be in IT or you have to be some smarty, nerdy McNerdnick and you don't. And that's the whole point of AI is to make it to where the average user can use it. Myth number two that I want to debunk is I have to be a programmer or no scripting language in order to use AI. Uh, kind of, yeah, kind of no, but not really. You don't need to know coding so much as you need to understand scripting. And all scripting is, is a way to talk to the AI. And most of them follow the same patterns of scripting. So we'll look at a couple of products today that I started out with that got me on my road to learning about AI that I think will enhance your life as well. And rule number one is play with it. Here's what really started it all, ChatGPT. And I'm going to show you how as a new user to get a free account with ChatGPT and you can play all you want. So if you go to chatgpt.com and come down here and hit sign up, it'll ask you to create an account. You naturally get access to version 3.5 and you get limited access to that 4.0. So you may run out of credits pretty quickly. And if you want to upgrade to $20 a month, you have a lot more features in it, including Doll E. Now that we've created our account, step number one, ask away. Talk to it like you would talk to me. Step number two, don't share any sensitive info. Don't put your bank accounts or credit card number or just stuff that you wouldn't want out on the web in here because they're still using that data to train the AI to make it even better. Number three, Check your facts. This thing can just make shit up sometimes, and some of it's pretty funny, but don't take it as gospel. Always check it again. All right, let's go. When using ChatGPT for the first time, someone recommended helping it find recipes for me. So let's go in and look at our pantry. Can you help me decide what to cook? I have chicken, potatoes, oranges, ginger, noodles, cheese, and all the typical baking and cooking supplies and spices. Let's hit go and see what it comes up with. You can see it'll just start off. It'll tell you all the ingredients that you might need. It'll tell you the directions, tell you how to cook the chicken. Oh, not just one option. It gives us another one. And it'll just keep going until it gives you probably two or three really good recipes. And this is for free. Aha! So now you'll notice I have little icons down here. This will read it aloud to me. So if you want to hear what she sounds like. Sure. Here are a few meal ideas using the ingredients you have. Oh, it's a dude. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to assume your ginger chat GPT. <laughs> sure. Here are a few meal ideas using the ingredients you have. One, chicken and ginger orange stir fry with noodles. Ingredients, chicken, oranges, ginger, noodles, garlic if available. What? Okay, that's cool. The next thing is you can copy it. So if you need to paste this into something else, such as Word or an email, you can ask it to regenerate it. If you didn't like any of these, you can tell it regenerate and it'll give you some new ones. And then it'll ask you, was this better or worse? Eh, it's about the same. Now look, you've got two and two. You can go back to your original ones if you want to. And then you can give it a thumbs down if it was a bad response, or you can change the model. 4.0 is the most recent one. I would highly recommend using that one. 
Here's another one. Tell me a joke. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Kind of like you, Chad GPT. That was terrible. Write me a song about using Chat GPT for the first time. Okay, that's cute. Look how it does song structure. It includes bridges and choruses and outros. I was sitting all alone looking for some aid, questions in my mind, thoughts a bit frayed. <laughs> okay, so now chat GPT is doing spoken word. <gasps> but I need to show you how to actually make this into a song. Let's copy this and let's go. Suno.com makes music. I'm not kidding you. And if you look on my YouTube page, there's a couple of songs that I made using Suno. Let's take those lyrics and let me show you how to make a song with Suno. So first, you're going to have to sign up and make an account. And here's some examples that you can click on and listen to. So these are people have made these public. It doesn't make your stuff public unless you tell it. So look at this one. This one's number one right now. It's got a lot of plays. So let's click on it. And let's look at the structure a little bit. And the style is electronic, sweet female voice, eerie, swing, dreamy. Okay, let's give this one a quick listen. Okay, so we get a feeling of what that kind of sounds like. You can tell it prompts just like you did chat GPT. You can have this one make up lyrics for you, or you can put in your lyrics, which is what we're going to do. Let's go create one of our own. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the create button. And I want to hit custom mode because that's where you put in your own lyrics. Oops. You have to agree to be good and not evil. Basically, you can't put Eminem lyrics in here because I know that's what you want to do. All right. So we pasted in our lyrics. And look, this is what's really important that ChatGPT already did for us. I got a lot better results when I had some of these little prompts in there. So this is great. If you want it to generate lyrics for you, you would click this button. Now we're going to enter the style of music. I think I want a happy rock male voice, the accordions, and a sea shanty. <laughs> what do we want to call this? Chat GPT is a friend to me. Yeah, that sounds like a sea shanty song. Let's go. Okay, so it generates two at a time. And I want to bring your attention over to the left side here. You notice I have 40 credits now. Each song rendering costs five credits. I technically started out with 50 and now five and five. Now I'm down to 40 credits and these refresh every day. So let's click on this first one and let's see what it sounds like. We'll just hit play. I was sitting all alone. Looking for some aid, questions in my mind, thoughts a bit frayed. Heard about a friend they call a GPT, a world of knowledge right at my screen. With a little hesitation, I logged right in. Typed a simple message, let the chat begin. Wonder what would happen if it would understand. My heart was racing, keyboard in my hand. Oh, chat GPT, you're a friend. Okay, that's very cutesy, Pirate. We may need to make some alterations to this one. Let's hit the next one. I was sick in the hall alone, looking for some aid. Questions in my mind, thoughts a bit for aid. 
heard about a friend they call a GPT, a world of knowledge right at my screen. With a little hesitation, I log right in. Okay, I don't know if you can notice right away, but the syncopation is just a little awkward and jicky with this one. So I, I already don't like this one. So I'm going to hit the thumbs down on it because I just don't think it rendered very well. Now back to this one. Actually, I don't think it's aggressive enough for a sea shanty. I feel like this is, are you ready, kids? Oh, I feel like SpongeBob is about to start singing. So instead of happy, let's change this to aggressive. Yeah. And let's create it again. Okay, notice it did two more renders for five each, and now I'm down to 30 credits. All right, let's listen to this first one. Ooh. Oh, was sitting all alone, looking for some aid, questions in my mind, thoughts a bit afraid, heard about a friend they call a GPT, a world of knowledge by it at my screen. Yeah, okay, no. Let's listen to the next one. Okay, immediately I'm getting weird owl vibes from this and I'm here for it. In my mind, thoughts a bit afraid. Heard about a friend that called it GPT. A world of knowledge right at my screen. With a little hesitation, I logged right in. Typed a simple message and the chat begin. Wondering what would happen if it would understand. My heart was racing, keyboard in my hand. Oh, GPT, you're a friend to me. Show me things that I could. Okay. Typed in my question, what to cook tonight? Chicken, potatoes, oranges in sight. With the blink of an eye, he gave me a plan. A culinary adventure right from this digital land. It's like magic, the way it knew. Guiding me through things I never knew. From coding to poems, it did it all. Made me feel ten feet tall. Oh, oh, chat GPT, you're a friend to me. Show me things that I couldn't see. From feeling low i type a little message and let the answers flow it's more than just a program it's a helping hand together we explore this vast digital land i'm digging this Both unfold. Well, we imagined a little bit there. <laughs> Shut up. Drop a little message and let the answers flow. The world of wonder just to click away. Thank you, Chad GPT, for brightening my day. Stop it. Oh my gosh, it kept going. Holy macaroni. That was the best example I could have ever dreamed up i'll be thumbs up that one to death oh my gosh okay wow holy cow that was like that was an even better example than i even i didn't know what to expect coming here honestly i mean i've done some and i've had to work at it pretty hard but this new version of this holy moly that was that was effortless that was even better than i could have even imagined Billie Eilish, move over. I'm here. Fade is here.
So now it's your turn. I want you to go out and I want you to find some AI and I want you to just play with it. And then I want you to tell me which one you used and what you did with it and what the outcome was. I'm dying to know. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I can't wait to go show my husband this. Oh my gosh. He's going to love this. Okay. I, I got to go. I got to go. Y'all go play. I'll see you next week. So here's to the moments, the first time and more. We'll trap the little message and let the answers flow. The world of wonder just to click away. Thank you, ChatGPT, for brightening my day.